journeying with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou And springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in the courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness. Mercy and love, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning,
Thank you, Sister Miller. Great is thy faithfulness. It was Christ's faithfulness 2,000 years ago. It was Christ's faithfulness. He died. It was his faithfulness that he rose again on the third day. And now we're sitting at the right hand of God interceding on our behalf. What are you worried about today? What is on your mind? What is your need? What are you fearful about this morning? What is troubling you this morning? I know some of you are hurting. But we all have hurt. So whatever your hurt are this morning, whatever your fear is, in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 14, to 16, he said, So then, since we have a great high priest who had entered into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testing we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we in need it the most. And so as we intercede on behalf of each other this morning, said let us come boldly Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light as we are about to pray let us remember our brothers and sisters who is suffering let us remember the sick and shutting those in the nursing home, in the hospital room, at home. Our children who's out there in this world. Let us remember one another. It's not easy living in this world today. <laughs> so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. It was your grace that wake us up this morning. It was your grace, oh God, that allow us to see another day. This blessed day, this special day, oh God. For your word said, you commanded your love toward us, that while we were yet sinner, Christ came and died for us, and to reconcile us back to you, the right relationship. But for, so for this reason, O oh Lord, you came, and you died, 
and but you rose again praise God and for all those who believe in you Father God will raise up one day and be with you forever in heaven and so Lord we just want to thank you for each and every person on this side of my voice oh Lord Father God you know what their needs are you know what they care about you know what they're hurting about Lord so, Father God, we want to lift up each and every person request unto you now, Lord. For we know, Father God, that you are our burden bearer. And so, Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will heal, that you will restore, and that you will bless each and every person under the sound of my voice in a very special way. Whatever your needs are, Father. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will grant it unto them in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that are in the hospital, those at home who are not feeling well, O oh God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will touch them in a very special way, O oh God. May they feel your presence right now, O oh God. And may they know, Father God, that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. So, Lord, we just want to thank you for this day, this special day. Thank you, Lord. We pray a special prayer for our pastor this morning and his family. Father God, as he bring his word that you put in his heart for us this morning. Oh, God, we pray, oh, Father God, that his word will be a, a sweet aroma unto us. Oh, Father God, that his word will comfort us. And let us know, oh, Father God, how much you love us. Oh, Father God, oh, God, I ask the Lord that you just bless his word today, oh, Father God. Bless his word. Give him a special anointing, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this day. Be glorified, oh, Father God. Be glorified today. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. At this time, with the deacons and those responsible for lifting up uh, today's tithe and offering, come forward. Uh, recently, I was uh, reviewing a book um, that was, uh, um, uh, it is recommended by a lot of marital therapists and such. The book is entitled uh, Five Love Languages. It's a book by Gary Chapman. Chapman. Uh, and the, the, the main principle or, or the thesis of the book um, is that you need to learn to love people, uh, not just how you feel like loving them, uh, but you need to love them according to the way that they, they want to be loved. I hope somebody's listening uh, today. Now, when you read this book, uh, one of the things that it tells us is that there is a love language that is called receiving gifts. Do I got anybody who's willing to admit today uh, that your love language is receiving gifts? I, I, I see I've only got uh, five witnesses with me today, uh, but I guarantee it can be proved because all somebody got to do to prove that your love language is gifts is miss out on your birthday. Forget that anniversary. Uh, don't don't do nothing for you on Christmas. Let Mother and Father's Day pass and Valentine's Day and all of that. And it will soon be proven onto you that your love language is indeed receiving gifts. Uh, and you have this. God has put this in you because you were created in his image. And one of God's love languages is actually receiving gifts. 
I know this because when you look in Genesis chapter 22, the Bible tells the story of God calling Abraham to go and sacrifice his son Isaac on top of Mount Moriah. And, and there, what Abraham conceives of his sacrifice is, is an act of worship, uh, which lets us know that whenever you give, whenever you sacrifice, God receives it as worship. Uh, and I know that we ought to be people that are willing to give to God because of just how much God has given to us. God has given you health today. Uh, God has given you strength. Uh, God has given you peace within your home. God has kept you in your job. Uh, God has kept you when you could not keep yourself. God has kept you in your right mind. God has given you so much and today we're just here to give thanks because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, and, and what I like about God's giving is there ain't no limit or no cap on that. I, I, I know we look at this thing as a 10 or 15 percent type of thing, but God didn't just give 10 or 15 percent but the blood of Jesus is worth an incalculable sum Jesus gave his all to us and I believe that we can worship him in giving on today uh, if you're willing to worship him and give today, here are some ways that we're able to give here at the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, the first of them being you can visit www.adventistgiving.org. This is my uh, choicest way of giving. Type in the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, there, From there, you can give to the local offering category, so you can go to the conference funds and give your tithe. You can also accomplish this on Cash App. Our cash tag is uh, dollar sign, Temple of Praise SDA. Leave within the subject line how you intend to give and our treasurers will make sure that it is put in the appropriate place. Uh, you can also mail it in uh, uh, or come and visit us. Our address is 1985 Green Road, Cleveland, Ohio. The zip code is 44121. As always, we are thankful for every gift that is given. There is none too small uh, because without you, your sacrifice, your acts of worship, we would not be able to do ministry here at the Temple of Praise Seventh Day Adventist Church. Let us go ahead and receive it at this time. we stand. The word of God says give 
and it shall be given unto you. In good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured to you again. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you now for increase. Lord, and for this opportunity to worship you uh, in giving. Lord, knowing uh, that we could never repay you for all that you have done for us. So, Lord, we just give you a token of our appreciation, Lord, and ask uh, that you would take it, break it up, multiply it, and be a blessing unto your people once more. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray, and let us all say amen. Let us remain standing for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 69, verses 16 to 21. The Psalms 69, verses 16 to 21. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. Don't hide from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in deep trouble. Come and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. You know my shame, scorn, and disgrace. You see all that my enemies are doing. Their insult have broken my heart, and I am in despair. If only one person would show me some pity. If only one would turn and comfort me. Twenty-one. But instead, they gave me poison for food. They offer me sour wine for my thirst. May the, may the Lord bless you as you meditate on his word. Thank you. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. God sent his son. They called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon and grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear everyone 
How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all of fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth a living just because he lives because he lives we can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone and bless God. Once more, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all fear is gone. Uh, because I know he holds the future. <sighs> Thank you so much, Sister Miller, for breaking up our hearts with that song. Now, as always, I come before you in the name of Yahweh, for his name alone is excellent and his glory is above the earth and the heavens. All power and authority has he granted unto his son, Yeshua, whom we call Jesus. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we will exalt him today. Therefore, God, may the words of my mouth and the, the, the contemplations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. Uh, greetings to each of you all, especially those who I haven't had the privilege and pleasure of, of meeting. My name is Renee Cannon. I'm the pastor of this here Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, I am husband to one Dr. Afia Cannon. Uh, I am father to Ryan and Corey Cannon, who are collectively called the Quakus, and I am proud and glad to be standing in your presence today, uh, especially on uh, this Sabbath here, uh, where we remember uh, the purpose for all of this. For the Bible says that if Christ be not risen, then everything, all of your faith, 
is in vain. So here today, uh, we remember the fact um, that, that Jesus died for us, but not only did he die for us, but he rose and he lived again for you and I. We just want to spend some time in the word of God looking at that, and I won't be long, so if you try to take a bathroom break, you're going to miss what I got to say right now. But go ahead and open up your Bibles today uh, to John chapter 19. We want to look at verses 28 through 30, and I'm looking in the eyes of Elder Light. It is so good to see Elder Light with us today. Uh, God has blessed uh, Elder Light and brought her through many a uh, trial, and it's just good to see you back in this place once again. Let us go to John 19, verses 28 through 30. And once you found John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30, I'd ask that you would indicate it by standing to your feet in honor and in reverence of God's holy word, if you are able. Uh, John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30. Our media team has done a wonderful job in supplying this text upon our screen today. John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30. I'm reading in your hearing this afternoon. The Bible says this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar or sour wine, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Uh, and this afternoon, for these next few moments, I want to spend our time speaking on the subject of the answer key. We want to talk about the answer key. You may be seated in the presence of an awesome God. Now, in one of my quarterly ministerial training sessions with the Allegheny West Conference, Dr. Calvin Rock, the former vice president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists was invited to share his perspective on ministry with us. And though there was a lot that he shared in this meeting, the one thing that stuck out to me was Dr. Rock's summation or synopsis of what he believed pastoral ministry to be about. Uh, for I can remember Dr. Rock saying that a pastor's calling is to walk their members through life and to the grave until the day that the pastor walks to the grave alone and lies down beside them. Uh, and if I might be honest today, I don't remember much else that Dr. Rock shared with us today, but this statement has left an indelible or ineradicable impression upon my mind. Uh, and the reason this comment has made such a mark upon my memory uh, is it because it is a reminder of the one thing that I find most difficult in pastoral ministry, which is seeing people nearing the final moments of their lives. I know this might sound like a revelation to some of you, for as pastors, people expect for us to be the calm in the nucleus of chaos. Uh, we are supposed to experience supernatural comfort in the midst of supreme discomfort and tranquility even as travesty awaits at the door. Uh, however, contrarily to the expectation that people have of the clergy, I have personally found that there is nothing harder in the work than being in the presence of the living while they are yet dying. Just thinking of these experiences, I can almost feel myself standing in the middle of a hospital room. The beeping and humming of the medical equipment in concert with the hushed soap opera voices of daytime television being the only thing that eclipses the deafening silence in the room. Uh, and the reason for the silence in the room uh, is the fact that death has literally siphoned or sucked the strength from the very soul of the individual that is lying upon the sick bed uh, and stripped of all of their solidity the only thing that they are able to do during these moments is reflect upon the lives that will soon pass them by uh, 
Uh, and it's in these most solemn moments that people are able to examine the circumstances of their lives and honestly assess whether they have lived up to their God-given purpose or potential or not. Uh, it is in these moments that people are able to review their triumphs and their tragedies. They are able to ruminate on their regrets and their rewards, their success and their shame, all that they have loved and all that they have loathed within this lifetime. In the final moments of a person's existence, they spend their time examining or reflecting upon the circumstances of their lives. And such was the plight of Jesus in his final moments. Uh, however, unlike many people that I encounter during my pastoral visits, Jesus did not enjoy the convenience of a cushy hospital bed, but his back rested upon a rugged and splintered cross. Uh, unlike many people that I see, Jesus was not surrounded by friends and family, but he was suspended in the air in between two thieves. Um, neither did Jesus receive any words of reassurance from clergy or the hospice staff, but Jesus was mocked by a crowd that cheered and celebrated his demise. For as we approach this text, we find a Jesus that had a crown of twisted thorns pressed down into his scalp. Uh, we find a Jesus that had been handed over, stripped down, and beat up. Um, Jesus was forced to drag his exhausted body up the side of a mountain called Calvary, and he was hanged at a place called Golgotha. Uh, in this text, we find the Jesus that had spent nearly six agonizing hours on the cross, his hands and feet feet made useless by the nails that had been driven through them, his endurance and stamina zapped by the sure effort that it took um, to hold his beaten, bruised, and blooded body up um, so that he could breathe the breath of life. Um, Jesus had been scorched beneath the relentless heat um, of the Palestinian sun. Um, his sweat poured acidic salt into his open wounds, creating a stinging insult to his shame. His lips were chapped and trembled from the pain. The saliva in his mouth evaporated into the air, leaving his dehydrated tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth. And therefore, all that Jesus could do during his dying moments was to reflect upon his life. Uh, and in his reflection, John 19 and 28 informs us that Jesus didn't get down to his final moments and lament over a life that was filled with regret. Um, neither did Jesus reflect upon upon um, his squandered potential and his neglected purpose. Um, but the Bible says that as Jesus reflected, he realized that he had accomplished all that he was sent to do. Um, this thing gives me chills just thinking about it this afternoon. For when you think back on all that Jesus had done, um, you know that him accomplishing all that he was sent to do was more than a fantastic or a monumental feat. Um, for Jesus had left heaven for the the ghettos of Galilee. Um, Jesus had transformed a group of miscreants uh, into mighty men of God. Um, Jesus turned water into wine. He cast demons into swine and he gave sight to the blind. Bless his name. Um, Jesus healed the sick without insurance. Um, he caused paralytics to stand and he healed a withered hand. Um, Jesus was a poor man, but watch this. Um, he fed the multitudes without food stamps. Um, he silenced the wind and the waves with his speech. Um, he walked on water with his feet um, and baptized the multitudes underneath. Um, Jesus preached in the synagogues and taught in the streets. Um, I could keep going this afternoon, um, but ain't enough hours in the day to share all the things that Jesus has done. Um, because the Bible says um, that if everything Jesus did were to be written down, um, the whole world or the entire cosmos wouldn't have enough room uh, to contain the amount of books that would be written. Uh, yet the text says um, that Jesus had accomplished all that he was sent to do. Somebody say all. 
And having come to this realization in the final moments of his life while hanging from the cross, I believe that his awareness of this allowed him to experience peace in the middle of his pain. I'm, I'm talking about the peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, now, however, to understand what I'm saying, you've got to imagine a scenario in which anybody but Jesus was on the cross um, and being crucified for sins they had never committed. Um, for if it were any of us, um, the final last seven recorded statements by Jesus on the cross, Sister McCall, would have been a lot different. Um, for somebody would have started off with the F words that ain't father or forgive. Um, but I'm talking about forget them for those of you who ain't been delivered yet. Um, somebody would have cursed the thief on the cross um, and told him, don't worry about paradise. Um, you're going to lift your eyes up in the second resurrection. Um, somebody would have yelled at John, don't just stand a recording. Um, I need you to do something about this. Um, somebody would have called for God to send down fire from heaven um, to destroy the workers of iniquity. Um, but while Jesus was on the cross, um, he could operate in grace. Um, he could be pacified even as he was passing. Um, he could experience peace in the midst of his pain because he had done all that God had sent him to do. Um, and if you're hearing me this afternoon, uh, I believe that there is an important important message for us embedded in this editorial transcription of John. For in this lifetime, each of us will experience our own failures, um, our own challenges, embarrassments, and our own proverbial crosses. Um, in barring the return of Jesus, um, many of us will have a time of deathbed reflection. Um, and the way to maintain peace, um, even when things aren't turning out the way we desire for them to turn out, um, is to be honest in observing our situation. Um, and saying we have done all that God has called us to do. Um, and when you look back and you can say I loved on the people that God called me to love on. Uh, I witnessed to the people that he called me to witness to. Uh, I stepped out on faith like you said. I studied. I've worked hard and I grinded like you said to grind. Then you can live with the results um, even if they don't turn out like you want them to. You can have peace in the middle of your pain when you've done all that God has sent you to do the text says that Jesus had done all that God has sent him to do and knowing he had accomplished everything that he was sent to do Jesus was ready to declare it is finished uh, he was ready to commend his spirit into the hands of the father uh, Jesus was ready to proclaim I have fought the good fight I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Um, knowing that he had accomplished it all, Jesus was ready to exhale and, and, and give up the ghost and lay his life down. Um, but before he shut his eyes on the sleep of death, um, the text tells us that he had something else to say. Um, and Jesus, mustering up all the strength that he had in his system, lifted up his head and rested it against the splinter beam of the cross he then dragged up the heavy words up from his gut and out of his mouth cried out I thirst now there has been much written and spoken about the thirst of Jesus Christ mentioned in this verse while he was hanging from the cross uh, and some say that the thirst of Jesus was due to the suffering that he had done beneath the glare of the sun uh, however, my Bible tells me that Jesus is a rock indwelled by water, uh, that he is a well in the wilderness, a fountain of living waters, and anyone who drinks from him would never be thirsty again. So we couldn't be talking about literal thirst in this text. Um, now, there are some that say that the thirst of Jesus was metaphorical or allegorical, meaning that his thirst was emblematic or symbolic of the intense desire that he had to save souls. Um, and while that makes for some good preaching, um, I believe it to be textually invalid. Um, for the very fact that Jesus went to the cross, um, regardless of the thirst declaration, clearly shows that Jesus had a desire to save souls. Are you following me today? Um, uh, and understanding these things, I believe that the thirst of Jesus had another purpose. Um, and that purpose is plainly presented in the text. Um, for if you look back 
back in your Bibles, um, John 19 and verse 28 explicitly says that the reason Jesus declared I thirst um, was in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. That scripture that Jesus was filling can be found in Psalm 69 and verse 21. And there the psalmist prophesying of the Messiah's crucifixion said they gave me gall for my food and for my thirst. They gave me vinegar or sour wine to drink. Um, and if you go back to John 19 verses 28 and 29, you find this prophecy being fulfilled in Jesus. Um, for the text tells us that once Jesus told his persecutors that he was thirsty, they indeed attempted to give him vinegar to drink. Um, thus, when Jesus had received the vinegar, even his most staunch detractors had no choice but look at Jesus and say that he fulfilled everything that was spoken of him in God's word. Um, Y'all don't hear me preaching this afternoon. Um, for the believer, that means um, that the reason that Jesus said, I thirst, um, is so that you would know that his word never returns to him void, um, but it accomplished what he pleases um and it prospers in that which he sent it to do um jesus said i thirst um that you might know that whatever he prophesies comes to pass um what he proclaims is made perfect and what he foretells is fulfilled um and the reason that is so important to us um is because in christ's physical absence from the earth um the primary way in which he communicates with us is through his holy word um and in this passover season jesus Jesus wants to know that you want you to know that you can still trust in his word thinking of this I'm reminded of the year 1999 uh, for I was an eighth grader at Southern Middle School which is located in Lexington Kentucky and, and, and when I was there I had a US history teacher by the name of Miss Miller now Miss Miller uh, uh, she was one of the hardest teachers I ever had in my life um she signed assigned the most objectionable homework she had the worst projects and and, and worst of all she had the most miserable tests you could ever imagine um, However, even though Miss Miller was a very hard teacher, one thing that I can remember about her is that she wasn't a very organized one. Um, and, and what I mean by that is Miss Miller had a very messy desk. She had papers stacked high and wide. They were scattered so high that you can hardly see any of the mahogany on her desk. Um, and because her desk was so messy, sometimes she would accidentally leave the answer key to her test in plain view. Now, before I tell you what I, well, what I used to do, uh, I, I want you to know these are in my before Christ days, uh, and I'm not encouraging you to engage in this behavior, uh, but this is just what I used to do before I knew Jesus. Um, for before class, when everyone was crowding her and taking her attention, I used to go over to that messy desk, um, find the answer key, uh, and write down all the answers on the palm of my hand. Uh, and when the test came, uh, oh, I was able to ace it. Um, without even thinking about the questions that were being asked. Um, and the reason I could pass those tests um, is because the words on Miss Miller's answer keys, um, they were always true. Um, and in his word, um, God has already given us the answer key to life. Um, for time and time again, his word is proven um, to be trustworthy and true. Um, for by his word, um, light was separated from darkness. Um, clouds floated in the sky and mountains were pulled heaven high uh, by his word um, oceans were laid low um, the sun began to shine and stars got aligned um, by his word um, birds started chirping um, bees started buzzing and flowers started blooming um, by his word um, fish swam the seas um, lions began roaring and eagles started soaring um, by his word um, man was molded from clay um, and breathed the breath of life um, uh, by his word um, Abraham became wealthy Jacob became a prince Joshua became a warrior by his word um, Samson found supernatural strength um, David was made king and Esther was crowned queen um, by his word um, Naaman was cured of leprosy dry bones were resurrected um, and lions became kittens um, by his word um, blind men saw um, the paralyzed stood um, 
and the sick found health. Um, uh, by his word, um, Jesus died on the cross, um, was laid in tomb uh, and wrapped up in linen. Um, uh, by his word, um, he stayed in the tomb all Friday night. Um, by his word, um, he stayed in the tomb all day and Saturday night. Um, but also by his word, um, uh, early, somebody say early, one Sunday morning, uh, Jesus rose from the grave. Um, for his word says, um, I have authority to lay my life down um, and I have the authority to pick it back up. Um, that means we can trust in his word um, for it is the answer key to life. Um, that means when somebody asks you, um, does God have a plan for your life? Um, you tell him his word says, um, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Um, thoughts of peace and not of evil um, to bring you an expected end um, or a future filled with hope. Um, when somebody asks you um, if you're concerned that gossip will bring you down, um, you tell them his word says, um, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, um, and he'll silence every voice um, that is raised up to accuse me. I wish somebody heard me um, when they ask you um, if things will ever get better for you. Um, you tell them weeping may endure for a night, um, but joy cometh in the morning. Um, when they ask you um, who Jesus is to you, um, you you tell him he is a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. Um, he's a bridge over water. Um, he's a doctor and a lawyer. Um, he's bread when you're hungry. Um, and he's comfort when you're lonely. Um, he's a friend to the friendless. Um, and a parent to the orphan. Um, and as long as I got King Jesus, um, I don't need nobody else. Um, but his word says, um, in the world you shall have tribulation. Um, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Um, his word says, says um all things work together for good um for those who love him um and are called according to his purpose um his word says um i have never seen the righteous forsaken um nor his seed begging bread um his word says um when the enemy shall come in like a flood um the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him um his word says um let not your heart be troubled um you believe in god believe also in me um in my father's house there are many mansions. Um, if it were not so, I would have told you. Um, I go to prepare a place for you. Um, and if I go and prepare a place for you, um, I will come again. Um, and receive you unto myself. Um, that where I am, there you may be also. Um, therefore I will trust them with my life. Um, I will trust them with my salvation. Um, I will trust them with my marriage. Um, I will trust them with my children. Um, I will trust them with my health. Um, I will trust them with my finances. Um, I will trust him with all my heart um, and lean not on my own understanding. Um, that's why I love that old hymn um, that says, Tis so sweet um, to trust in Jesus, um, just to take him um, uh, at his word, um, just to rest um, upon the promise, um, just to say, uh, Thus saith the Lord, um, Jesus, Jesus, um, how I trust him um, and how I proved him over and over. Um, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, um, precious Jesus, um, oh, for grace, um, to trust him more, um, I don't know about you today, um, but I'm glad about the fact, um, that Jesus came for us, um, that he lived for us, um, that he died for us, um, that he rose for us, um, that he intercedes for us, um, and that he will return for us one day, um, if you are glad about that today, um, you ought to get up on your feet and give God the praise here today, um, for if Christ be not risen, um, uh, all of our faith is in vain. Uh, I'm so glad um, that Jesus came and died for us. Um, I'm so glad um, that he has made uh, a holding an election sure. Um, I'm so glad um, that his blood was shed for the remission of our sins. Um, all of this is about what Jesus has done for us. We remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, because if it had not been for all of that, everything that we do would be in vain. And, and there's some good news in that, for the Bible lets us know that the same power that raised Jesus from the grave, it is also working in you. Um, uh, uh, therefore, if Jesus is able to get up from the grave, then you can get up from that bad situation. 
uh, you can get up from that breakup. Um, you can get up from divorce. Um, you can get up from depression. If Jesus got up from the grave, um, and that same power is working up in you, um, that means that there is nothing that we are not able to get up from. You ought to give God the glory in here today. Our oh, heads are bowed and our eyes are closed here. Today, I make one appeal today just for, for that individual. You're here today. God, God is calling you. You see now the purpose of it all. Uh, you, you understand that if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord, uh, if it had not been for his shed blood, um, uh, uh, that we would all be lost. And today you want to give your life on to Jesus Christ. Today on this, this high day and this Passover season, you want to mark this season by saying, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're here today. You want to be baptized. I'm asking you to raise your hand today. God is calling you to be baptized. He is calling you today to make a decision that you will follow him all the way. The one thing I love about God is that he requires uh, 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 so little of us when com in comparison to himself. Uh, for, the, for the Bible lets us know that, 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 that Jesus, for, for, for six long hours, he was crucified uh, uh, atop that cross on the Mount uh, Calvary. And, and all he says to you, uh, for you to be able to receive the benefits that are due to his work, uh, is that you must believe and be baptized. Ain't God good. You're here today. You believe, but you want to be baptized. I see you. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, I want you to stay with me uh, right after service. Is there anybody else here today? God is calling you today. Uh, are those individuals here today? You want to say today uh, is the day that I am rededicating. I am recommitting my life for Christ. I want you to raise your hand so that we can pray uh, with one another and for you on today. God is calling you today to surrender it all unto him because he's that, he's that good shall we pray our father and our God Lord we thank you for the fact that you sent your son Jesus Lord uh, uh, that even though humanity uh, was and still is a mess that you came and died for us anyway Lord to remove Lord the, the stain of sin that we have caused upon this earth Lord and if any day Lord let us today make this our reflection uh, and our focus lord that we would never become ungrateful that we would never reduce the christian religion uh to to just things that we have and that we don't uh that we will remember if we receive not another thing lord you've already done enough it's in the mighty and matchless name of jesus we pray and let us all say amen, amen. and amen in this place and benediction as we remain resting upon our feet the bible says may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace peace in your home peace in your heart peace when you come and peace when you go in jesus name let everyone say amen and amen come on put those hands together and bless god one more time in this place amen you may be seated